Hello, church. I just wanted to take a minute to share a missional story that our missional community experienced this past weekend and encourage you and your missional communities and just talk for a second about the larger vision that God's called New Hope to and that we're growing in and experimenting with as we go. So the past couple of weeks, our missional community and Michelle and I have been praying specifically for our next door neighbors. We've reached out and asked if there's various ways we could help, you know, in yard work or, or whatnot. And this past Sunday, as our missional community was in our living room, kind of distanced around the room, we were singing, we were sharing prayer requests, we were uh, talking about the sermon, we were uh, just trying to encourage one another in the faith, there was a knock on the front door. And it was one of our next door neighbors. And he came over and said, I really appreciate that text. And you know, the, there is a lot, as you know, in my yard, and there's all this, and it's hard for me to keep up. Our neighbor's a little bit older. And so he said, you know, I wouldn't ever want to ask anybody to help. He, he wasn't like asking for help, but he was sort of saying, no, 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 you really don't need to do that. But I mean, if you wanted to, you could, but like, really, I wouldn't ask. And so we felt like it was permission being granted. And we said, please let us, please let us come and do a little bit of work. We said, we'll call you in an hour or so, and we'll finish up our study and worship time here. And then we'll just come over. And we had kids and we had adults and um, we'll just, we'll come over and let us know what you want us to do. So we went back and we finished our time and we, we, we really felt like God and the Holy Spirit had moved in that setting. And then we closed in prayer and walked across the, the yard to the next door neighbor's house. And he said, well, actually there are some things, there's this dirt that I need to get dumped in the back. It's really hard for me to wheelbarrow it all. There's a bunch and these trimmings from branches to take up back and some big branches fell in the windstorm, but I don't have a chainsaw. If they could be chopped up and the kite thrown out into the woods there, that would be great. And so our group was there probably even for less than an hour. It wasn't a super long time. But uh, in that time, we just did a lot of things all at once and smiled and laughed and talked with him. He's got a great sense of humor, so we joked with him and just enjoyed spending some time. And it was considered an answer to our prayer because we've been looking for ways to reach out and serve. And sometimes you don't know how to connect with neighbors. You want a chance to help, but what do they need or what will they allow? Or, or you just don't always know what to do. And so God gave us this opportunity. It kind of reminded me from the book of Acts of the story of... Um, Peter, where Peter's in prison and the group is gathered for a Bible study and they're praying for him to come uh, to be set free and whatever. And he comes and knocks on the door and they don't even know it's him or that they ignore the, the girl and says that it's him. Like, they felt like that. We're praying for opportunities. We're being missional. We're studying together and then the knock on the door comes. And it was just, thank you, God. But we really learned a lot from our neighbor and were taught a lot by God from him, probably even much more than we gave to him in this experience. Because at the very end, as we're talking in his side driveway there, he was saying, you know, I want to tell you a story you really made a big impact on me because many years ago when our kids were little, we shared a home. Uh, we were on one side and there was actually a couple of nuns who lived on the other side. And he said, he made it very clear this wasn't a Catholic or Protestant thing. It was like a faith thing, how different people approach their faith. And he said, you know, the first snowstorm, I shoveled the driveway and, or the pathway and they said, no, 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 you stay on your side, we'll shovel our own. And then when his kids would play in the yard, they're like, no, this is our side of the yard. And he's like, well, we share the yard and I have little kids. I can't really keep them on my half. And he just found in every interaction with them that it was, you know, you stay on your side, we'll stay on ours. And he said, honestly, they were some of our worst neighbors we've ever had. And he said, I kept wondering, like, if this is what the faith, their faith is all about, why don't they have any more joy? Oh, that's, that's a rebuke that we as Christians just need to maintain, you know, can be so focused and so serious about doing the right thing. And like we talked about with our apprenticeship with Christ, right? We're like, we're not doing the wrong things and we're trying to be good. And it's like, we might, we, we can so easily just lack joy. And he said, but I consider you guys some of our best neighbors. You're the exact opposite of that. And I love it. It's amazing that you'd be over here and doing this in our yard. And to us, it's such a small thing, but to him, it wasn't. And he saw joy in us as we're laughing and joking and just enjoying a beautiful fall day outdoors, uh, helping someone. What could be better? So he brought up that, that juxtaposition of how people approach faith. And it struck me as I was thinking about it, even for us, we had two different components of the same faith. We had the, the prayer and the study and the, the body of Christ ministering to one another component. And we had <clears throat> the reaching out and practical service, meeting the needs of those around us moment. And both of those are church. Both of those are faith. Love God, love your neighbor. We, we love God by how we love our neighbor. And we, we love our neighbor because we love God and God first loved us. It's like this interlocking mesh. And they're all necessary. And so as I look at our 
church and see as God's helping us to grow, I want to encourage us in all of our missional communities to keep the focus in both places. You know, the, the worship gathered component, whether it's the whole New Hope family, all the missional communities together, or whether it's individual gatherings of people in homes or backyards, that's a vital piece of the puzzle as we connect with the Holy Spirit, as He speaks to us, as we read God's Word and know what He calls us to do, and as He transforms us by that exposure to His presence. And we live it. We have to live it. We can't just be home Bible studies, but we also can't just be social service clubs. It's both. You know, back in April or May, as the coronavirus shut down our corporate gatherings, we essentially asked homes, would you be missional communities? Would you take over our need for gathered worship, just in smaller ways. It feels like that's a safer approach to this pandemic. It feels like that's a good way for us to maintain close relationships. We have a small building here. It helped us manage the summer, essentially, by saying, okay, corporate church, we're handing off worship times to be more like living room, backyard worship in smaller groups. Thank you, missional communities, for that. But that doesn't make those homes purely Bible studies. You know, a missional community doesn't just become living room worship, that's a portion of it. A missional community is a gathering of Christians that also reaches the people around them. It's both and. And so we got to experience that and just reminded me, I want to remind us that our missional communities are not just a temporary holdover for corporate worship where we're trying to sing a song and preach a or read a scripture and then as soon as we can get all back together again then we'll we'll stop these home gatherings and hopefully we'll have some outreach projects like serve home a couple of times a year no we're learning how to be friends and believers who are active in smaller bands of disciples and now, as you know, with the fall and now through the winter, we're hoping to get together in our corporate gatherings once a month so we can have that full fellowship. Like, oh, okay, here's the whole church. What's happening here? So we got like this balance. We've got the whole corporate, you know, the temple, kind of as Acts chapter 2 said, they met daily in the temple courts and then they met in each other's homes and they met the needs of the people around them, experienced the favor of people who they were serving, people with needs like widows and orphans and the poor around them. They consolidated all the resources and gave it away to whoever had need, first to the brotherhood and then to any who were in need around them. So there's this beautiful kind of three-part thing going on right now. And uh, I want to just encourage us to make the most of it as the winter goes and maybe as we get back to warmer weather, maybe as the restrictions loosen, maybe we'll have more opportunities to do the corporate thing. But I don't want to do the corporate thing at the expense of still being in each other's homes, whether that be for worship or whether that be for outreach. And I don't want to just be in homes doing Bible studies or in the corporate thing doing corporate worship at the expense of just ministering to our neighbors. So let me encourage you to keep those three pieces in mind and as we go through the winter months, uh, try to make it to whatever of the larger corporate gatherings you can make it to. We know that health is a restriction, schedules can be restrictive, um, but prioritize that time because if we're just in our smaller groups, or if we're just on our own, we're not going to realize what God is doing. We're not going to realize what a bigger, a small part of a bigger thing we are. And whenever there are home gatherings, the missional communities, the ones that you're kind of associated with, prioritize those, get to those, and talk personally and intimately, you know, around a living room or in a backyard with friends and say, this is where I'm at in my faith. What is the Bible saying to me? What's the Holy Spirit saying to me? And then as groups of friends say, well, where can we serve? God, please give us someone. And maybe there'll be a knock on your door like there was on ours. So... I see this happening. I see the, the, the steps towards more corporate gatherings coming about and God bless Pastor Abraham and the opportunity to have a larger worship space because we don't actually fit in the chapel right now, but we can fit there. So we can have these opportunities for corporate worship. We can have these moments where we're, we're personal, we're real with each other, and we can have these opportunities to show people that God loves them and um, we'll be blessed even more probably than the people we're blessing because... Uh, our faith will be a faith of obedience to Christ, loving those in need just the way He loved us. This is love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us while we were yet sinners. So God bless you and your missional communities. We we'll look forward to seeing you at upcoming corporate gatherings and uh, be praying for the knock on your door. God bless.